This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Miss Dorothea Dix, who had been appointed by the President, head of the Army Nurses, took me from Washington to Alexandria to the Mansion House Hospital. She told me on the journey that the surgeon in charge was determined to give her no foothold in any hospital where he reigned, and that I was to take no notice of anything that might occur and was to make no complaint whatever might happen. She was a stern woman of few words. There seemed to be much confusion about the mansion house, which before the war was a famous hotel, and every part of it was crowded. She left me in the office and went in search of Dr. S., the sight of the wounded continuously carried through on stretchers or led in as they arrived from the boats that lay at the foot of the street on which the hospital stood, this was just after that awful Cedar Mountain battle, August 9, seemed more than I could bear, and I thought Miss Dix would never come. At last she appeared with Dr. S., who eyed me keenly, and it seemed to me very savagely, and gave me in charge of an orderly to show me to the surgical ward, as it was called. It consisted of many small rooms with a broad corridor, every room so full of cots that it was only barely possible to pass between them. Such a sorrowful sight. The men had just been taken off the battlefield. Some of them had been lying three or four days almost without clothing, their wounds never dressed, so dirty and wretched. Someone gave me my charges as to what I was to do. It seemed such a hopeless task to do anything to help them that I wanted to throw myself down and give it up. Miss Dix left me, and soon the doctors came in and ordered me to follow them while they examined and dressed the wounds. They seemed to me then, and afterwards I found they were, the most brutal men I ever saw. So I began my work, I might say night and day. The surgeon told me he had no room for me, and a nurse told me he said he would make the house so hot for me I would not stay long. When I told Miss Dix I could not remain without a room to sleep in, she, knowing the plan of driving me out, said, My child, I was nearly as old as herself, you will stay where I have placed you. In the meantime, Union General George B. McClellan's army was being landed below us from the peninsula. Night and day, the rumbling of heavy cannon, the marching of soldiers, the groaning of the sick and wounded were constantly heard, and yet in all that time I never once looked from the windows I was so busy with the men.